So, so my question is that what are your thoughts on um, the developments in science and technology affecting what is right and what is wrong? Will it make it more clearer or will it make it more obscure? Uh, for example, uh, now uh, to take the example of um, like uh, animal cruelty by eating non veg non veg and uh, um, dairy industry. Uh, say technology is now developing uh, lab grown meat and uh, such alternatives where now that it is making it clearer what is right now even if people want to eat meat they can uh, eat meat without animal cruelty but then there are also um, technologies which are making it more obscure like for example uh, during the pandemic when we were having online uh, sessions and online exams, um, the technology allowed everyone to cheat in a way uh, that would not be possible in offline exams. And they had many justifications for doing so. Uh, in a sense, what I'm trying to say is uh, the technologies, uh, the technological development is giving us new options. Um, so some options make it play, uh, clearer that that op new option is right while some options give more confusion so i just want to hear your thoughts on how the technology and scientific developments uh, affect what is right and what is wrong thank you these two are uh, when it when it comes to the inner domain and how these two affect the person from inside these two are uh, not in the same dimension, science and technology. You see, science helps you learn the facts of the universe, including the human body and the, and the brain, right? That's what science enables you to look into. And when that happens, a lot of uh, superstitions are cleared and beliefs, needless beliefs are removed. And when those beliefs are gone, then the inner center you operate from, that improves. I'll clarify through an example. Let's say you believe in racial supremacy, as the Nazis did. Right? Now you can have signs that will tell you that when it comes to physicality, the races are hardly any different from each other. They were talking of the, the pure Aryan blood, for example. And science will tell you that when it comes to blood, there are just those four categories and, and then the, the Rh plus, Rh minus, whatever. There is nothing called an Aryan blood. You can be O, you can be B, whatever, but you cannot be Aryan. Hmm? When you fall sick, you do not go out looking for Aryan blood. So the center that you had, the egoistic center that you had, that is challenged, rather clarified and purified by the findings of science. And science has helped human beings a great deal, not just material, materially, not just uh, physically, but also internally. You, you think of the travails of the ancient man. The fellow did not know what all those things above in the sky are. Sometimes he was thinking that uh, it's, a, it's a large black canopy and all these things are little gems and diamonds studded on the canopy. And all that would lead to a lot of inner confusion. Hmm? And that would translate into personal incapacity when you do not know who you are and the world you are uh, operating in uh, then then everything that you think feel or do simply goes haywire does it not i do not know why there is an eclipse and i might i might feel that i need to slaughter my neighbor to avoid the curse of the gods and that was indeed happening in several parts of the world Hmm? The, the sun appears hidden 
surely the god is demanding some sacrifice to reappear otherwise the god is threatening to go away and if the sun goes away that would be a bad thing so what do i do and then some learned priest comes over and says you know you need to sacrifice your neighbor because the neighbor in some way was aspiring to be the next priest but that's the hidden story so the neighbor has to be sacrificed and all those things were happening so backwardness in science leads to a lot of inner darkness also inner darkness the one who we are inwardly he needs science not not just uh, spirituality he needs science to be a great human being the upanishads put it this way you need both vidya and avidya if you are to be of any avail vidya is knowledge of yourself your own inner processes how your thoughts operate your mind your mind your feelings your impulses instincts reactions all those things relationships all those things so that's vidya and the upanishads very bravely and very forthrightly declare that if you do not have avidya avidya is knowledge of the universe which you could uh, loosely call as scientific knowledge that if you do not have avidya there is no point having vidya in fact they declare that between someone who has only vidya and someone who has only avidya the one having only avidya has an edge actually hmm? and then they say the the great one the liberated one is the one who has both vidya and avidya if you want to cross over the ocean of ignorance you need knowledge in both the directions you need to know the world which is which comes to you from science and you need to know yourself which comes from self observation so that's science for you now what's technology technology is application of science according to your own convenience or need or greed or interest or whatever right so science purifies the one within whereas technology is simply a toy in the hands of the one within please understand whosoever you are you will be pulled up if you really go deep into science and that is the reason why we find a lot of uh, wisdom in the personalities of a lot of eminent scientists the same thing you cannot say for ceos of tech companies hmm? you cannot compare let's say a bill gates to an albert einstein very different so technology is simply your slave while science can make you better in that sense science can pull you upwards whereas technology is something that is always behind you hmm? you 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 are you are uh, operating your slave called technology like a dog on leash getting it so so we need a lot of science to be better and we need a lot of self knowledge to be better and if we do not have science and self knowledge which is vidya and avidya then unfortunately technology can be a very very dangerous thing technology in the hands of the wrong kind of population will prove disastrous to everybody disastrous towards the entire planet and self destructive for the human species hmm? so progress in the field of technology alone does not mean much in fact it can be a thing of concern you would have heard that anecdote the monkey and the sword and the king and the king had this very pet monkey and the monkey too was fond of the king and the king went to sleep and the monkey was watching over and a fly came from somewhere and sat right on the nose of the king and the 
monkey was appalled such a great king and a mere fly is perched on the nose so what does the monkey do picks up the sword and slash what does technology do instead of the sword it gives an intercontinental missile to the monkey and that's what has happened in worldly we are still monkeys but technology has given us huge power power that we don't even deserve power that we cannot even responsibly wield hmm? so science is useful spirituality is useful technology can be disastrous for technology to be of constructive use to human beings you would have guessed by now what is needed it is needed that growth in wisdom keeps pace with growth in technology if the rate of growth of wisdom lags behind the rate of growth of technology then we are hurling towards disaster Do you do you think now the rate of growth of wisdom is matching the rate of growth of tech? No way, no way. I think you too know that you just wanted it from me, so we all know that. We all know that. We all know that. The monkey has at most graduated to an orangutan, but in no way are we still capable of being called human beings. And we have unmatched power, and you see what we have done with that power. where is the forest cover you know the number of species that are going extinct every day we have been able to do that only because we have a lot of economic and technical power at our disposal and we are using that to ruin this planet in fact it's already gone already gone we are de facto in the sixth mass extinction phase so that's what we have done thank you sir